咁喺下一個 speaker 咧，有啲人話佢同我有少少似樣嘅。佢係咪你爹哋啊？哇，搞錯啊！係啊，其實佢係我哥哥嚟嘅。哦，阿 Kelvin 係係啊 ，Kelvin 佢係 Food Cycle 嘅創辦人同埋呢個行政總裁。咁 Linkin 係佢細佬，咁你可唔可以同大家講下 Food Cycle 誒、呃、其實係做啲咩嘅咧？我其實 Kelvin 由細到大都對食物又好有興趣嘅，咁係佢創辦咗 Food Cycle 咧。佢而家就其實依家有好多超級市場啊，即係 Three Sixty、City Super 或者 Park and Shop 咧，都會每日掉好多仲食得嘅食物嘅，可能啲生菜啊 bruise 咗少少啊，或者啲罐頭係凹咗少少，咁啊佢哋用唔到賣唔出去就會掉噶啦。咁啊啊 Calvin 依家喺英國咧就收集曬啲類食物咧，就用年青啲志願者同埋大學啲廚房咧嚟準備翻啲嘢食。係啊，俾翻啲有需要啲人士嘅。嗯，咁其實 Kelvin 嗰個社會企業咧喺英國嗰度誒進行嘅，咁都有十二個分店，分店係啦，咁都喺 London 啊、Bristol 同埋蘇格蘭嘅愛丁堡都有嘅。咁不如咁，我哋而家有請 Kelvin 上嚟同我哋分享佢嘅心得啊。Hello. Thanks, Lincoln and Noreen, for that introduction.、Um, they basically explained what I was going to say, so maybe I should just get off stage now. <laughs> I'll just go back home now.、Um, so I'm Calvin. I'm 27.、Um, I'm Lincoln's brother.、Um, I'm from Canada, and、um, Eden's speech was just wonderful.、Um, I was just thinking about what I was doing at 15, and me and my brother were just playing with Lego and watching TV, quite boring stuff. So I don't know what I'm going to say here, but well. Instead of me saying stuff and you guys listening, I actually want to know about what you guys are thinking here because this is about you guys, young people, and social innovation. There's a lot of social issues in Hong Kong. I think there's a lot of issues that want to be solved. I just want to、um, get an idea what you think is important in Hong Kong because I'm from London and UK. I want to know more about you guys. So can I, we get a couple mics over here? So can anybody? Just say, what are they really mad about? What are they mad about? Any environmental problems that they think they're mad about here in Hong Kong? Anybody? Goi sao? Stop. Hi. Pollution. Wu Yim. Zhong Yao. Zhong Yao. Lap sap. Lap sap. Okay. So that's Wu Yim. Yao Gao. How about、um, a social group? 有冇人係 neglected 嘅？即係你覺得有冇啲老人家或者年青人？ Um, 要多啲 power 啊！少數民族，少數民族 ，OK， 好好。OK， so how about、um, how about just the social problem? What's a very important? I don't want adults or I don't want Noreen. I want an actual answer from the crowd, and I'm just going to stand here until I get an answer from one of you guys. What's a social problem, guys? The rich poor gap. What else? Youth unemployment, youth skills. What else? Get mad, people! Come on. Are you saying? Okay. My retirement. Thai low, then high Thai. Most in Thai. Okay, so these are important issues, and some of you guys are more enthusiastic about、uh, um, them than others.、Um, so that's how we got started. I got. Mad about a couple issues in the UK. One was food waste. So Lincoln told me,、um, told you a little bit about food waste in the UK, and I'll tell you a little bit more. Each year, about 10 million tons worth of food gets thrown out in the, by the UK supermarkets. About 25% of this can be reclaimed to be used to cook food out of. So that's a lot of food. 2.5 million tons of food can be taken and cooked with meals. That's a one. That's one problem. I was really. Mad about another problem I was mad about was food poverty. So what does food poverty actually mean? It means when you don't have enough money to eat proper food. So you know you're eating su tiu to my home bao bao every day or something like that.、Um, not getting enough of your vegetables and fruit, or you can't reach it. So I think it's very good here in Hong Kong that you can have access to your local supermarket or gai si at the bottom of your road. But in London and also in the UK, there's places where you have to drive about 40 miles just to get to the local supermarket. And if you want to kind of put a picture of what food poverty means, it's not being really fat or really skinny 
or things like that. It's actually about the hidden things that make you have illnesses like diabetes or heart disease or heart attacks later on in life. And I still remember the story that was told to me about two years ago. Um, it was in East London in a very poor area. There was a huge um, supermarket beside it like um, Bakai, and then there was a very poor neighborhood. And a doctor there told me I was taking, he, he was taking the blood sample from the, from the girl for the daily check, um, the annual checkup. And do you guys all have blood checkups, yeah? Um, and then they test your iron levels, right? Gum, go, um, iron, <laughs> feet. Um, and he kind of looked at it, and it's like, this can't be right. That's really, really low. And he tested again, and it was still that. And it was an iron level of two or something really low. And I said, well, doctor, I don't understand what two means or three means because I'm not a doctor. You are. So what does that mean? And he said, well, the only time I've seen iron levels that low was in a refugee camp in Africa. But this was in London with a big Tesco supermarket across the street. I'm like, how can this be? So four million people are affected by food poverty in the UK. So that's problem number two. And the third problem I was very mad about was young people. I just hate, no, I, don't, I love young people, but young people are not getting enough skills growing up. They don't know, um, I think increasingly we don't know how to cook, and when we have our university degrees, our high school degrees, even our master's degrees, you come out with very skill, few skills that um, people can hire you with. So that, those were the three things I was really angry about, and I decided to do something about it. I'm just going to get all those three problems and bring them to the one and solve them. And I guess some, you can say, you know, why don't you just tackle one problem instead of all three? Isn't it actually a lot harder to tackle three? But actually, with Food Cycle, when you put those three things together, surplus food, food poverty, and volunteers, those three problems together actually bring in a solution. And that's what Food Cycle does. We bring together young volunteers, surplus food, and a free kitchen space to create nutritious meals for people affected by the community. So that's what we do. And, oh, I didn't even put the thing up yet. I'll put the, I don't have a slide, I just have this, so it's fine. Full screen. Um, Dim Juno. Oh, okay, that's fine. And how do you do full screen? Um, oh, that's fine. Yeah, I, I, I have two slides, so that's just my logo, and it's over here as well, so <laughs> there's no pictures. Um, so that's what we did, and of course, um, I'll just tell you a little story about how we got started. We got it started small, and when I got started, I'm 27 now, started this about two years ago, so I was 24, 25, I'm not really sure. Um, 24 years old, one person trying to start this up. What did I know? I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything. I just had this idea. I wanted to do it. And what did I do? I just asked for help. I just asked for help from people who'd done similar things, such as the Campus Kitchens Project in the United States. They do the exact same thing as us. I wanted to use that model and bring it over to the UK and make it relevant for us. Just as if anybody wanted to do food cycle here, they would maybe borrow models from internationally and bring it over here. I talked to Read International, which is doing about the same thing with young people, but they collect school books from high schools and universities that they no longer use because, you know, you guys all go to school and, you know, there's um, first edition, second edition, and then like six months later, there's the fourth edition and you have to buy the new edition because the old edition was like two different pages and they, they make you buy new ones. So all those old ones are just sitting there for waste. So they t take all this and bring it to a school in Tanzania or Uganda so they can make use of it there. So they had a very good volunteer model and I just went to the Rob who was the founder over there. It's like, can I borrow your model to uh, run Food Cycle? And he kind of thought about it. It's like, yeah, sure, here you go. Anything you want, whatever. We're, we're not really in competition, so here you go. And I also talked to an organization named, called Fair Share, which is kind of like um, Feeding America in the United States. And so they collect large amounts of surplus food from manufacturers like Nestle 
and um, Nabisco and things like that, and they take it and redistribute it. So I asked them, like, how do you do food surplus reclamation with all the legal and insurance and this? So I, for about four or five months, all I did was meet with people and drink coffee with them. So I was really hyper. Um, and what I meant, what I want to get through with this is that, you know, we talk about innovation, but sometimes innovation doesn't start with, you know, you working very hard at something that nobody's ever tried. As Eden said, sometimes you just got to look on Google to see who other, uh, what other things other people have done that are similar, call them up and ask, can I get your help? Because I want to do the same thing. Um, so back to me going, so I had a lot of ideas. I had to put it, put it together. And I worked for the first project for, in a, for about eight months. So from September 2008 till about May 2009, I was working on all the legal, insurance, health and safety, convincing the supermarkets, convincing myself, making a website, making a logo, things like that. And it finally came up to, I still remember the day, it was May 7th, 2009, and we were in the kitchen, and we were cooking all this stuff, and we got some um, food from the local supermarket, we got some from um, my friend's garden, and we cooked this whole meal. It's like, oh man, you know, this is where it all comes down. This is where it works. And about nine o'clock on a Sunday night, we were going to serve it on Monday, we came up with this meal. That was just terrible. It was just this like stewy soup. And I'm like, I just looked at it. It was like brownish, yellow. And I'm like, oh God, did I just waste eight months of my life just... And like all my volunteers were looking at me, he's like, Calvin, <laughs> like, <laughs> oh God. Um, yeah, so what did we do? We, we, we tried again and again and again, and we got better because we saw how crap it was. And it's just like, you know, you can buy anything on the street that would look and taste better than that. So um, we just kept going, and what we realized was that because we already solved a lot of the berries, we just had to keep on going. And what developed after that was a model, a system to spread this out. So kind of like one Starbucks. Once you have one model for Starbucks, you can run it all across the country. So because we've already solved all the health and safety problems, the insurance problem, the doubt, the disbelief, and all the, all the things that we had to get through. So we just replicated it across the country. So right now, we're in 12 projects across the UK, and um, for the people who are in s with simultaneous translation, let's test the translator. Um, so we're in Birmingham, Durham, Edinburgh, Cambridge, <laughs> Norwich, Bristol, London, so basically many places in the UK. We have 12 projects across the UK. And how do we do this? We run this all by young people, and how do we do it? We don't hold, we don't kind of pull you along. It's like, you have to do this. You are our food cycle, and you have to do this with us, and you have to do it this way. We just kind of hold your hand and says, I'll give you a t-shirt, I'll give you a water bottle, I'll give you some basic tools, but you do it in your own way. Because every location, they're all different. And you have to do it in your own local way. Find your own local kitchen, find your own local beneficiary. So you can work with Lo Yan Ga, Ling Cheng Yan, Mami, whatever, um, and two cups each time. So everything is different. We just say, you have to do a very simple thing, which is cook meals, but we can let you do anything you want. We'll support you all along the way. So it's all about just holding hands. It's not about pulling them. Um, and we have 12 projects. At, at the end of next year, we want to do 20 projects. So from about a year and a half ago, we had two. We're at 12, and we want to do 20. It's a lot of projects, we're very ambitious, but at the same time, we realize that these are actually functioning like little businesses. And just like every little business is, I think Legward was saying that, you know, eight out of 10 businesses fail. I don't think, hopefully not eight out of 10 of ours will fail, but we will know that some of them will fail. And if, it, if they fail, it's okay. We say to the young people, try your best, make mistakes, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. The most important thing, did you learn, did we learn, so others will avoid those mistakes as well. So it's been, how many months? I don't know, like 18 months. We've served over 9,000 meals. We've collected about five tons worth of food and had about 3,000 volunteer hours from our young people. So we're a network of about 250 volunteers from all across the country under the Food Cycle Youth Movement. And 
as we expanded, you might ask, you know, how are you going to know all the way up in Scotland if they're doing a good job or not? Um, we give them trust. We give all our volunteers trust. We trust that they're going to do the right thing, the best thing, which is actually one of our greatest strengths and greatest weaknesses. Um, and to kind of put that in a box, we also give them three rules, which is just follow the food cycle mission, which is whatever you do, as long as you reduce food waste and food poverty, I don't care, do it. But of course, there's rule number two, which is when you're doing that, don't break the law. <laughs> because when you've got students, you have a lot of those things over there. And then um, the last one is lead, don't follow. Be a leader in your community. Do new exciting things, fail and learn. And when we have the successful things, we'll replicate them all across the country. So I see I'll have one minute, so I'll breeze by. I have um, one last bit, and that's what are you guys, what are you going to get out of this? You've got me talking in English about something in England. Not all of you guys want to start up your own projects. Not all of you want to um, you know, start up something like Food Cycle. So what do you, can you get out of this? Well, as I was running the company, as I was starting this up, I had some very simple principles that I was following to, um, I guess, make it a successful. And I'll share some of these with you right now. And maybe if you, you don't need to remember the rest of the crap that I talked about if you just remember these two, three things I talked to you about here. Number one, I... When I was um, working, it was all I believed in was giving as much as I could and expecting nothing back. So give, give as much as you can to your friends. When people ask you for advice, give them. And you might think you're too young to give advice, give, but the thing is you actually have a very valuable thing here. You have a very valuable thing that adults actually don't have, which is time. Donate your time, give your time to help others. And that's how Food Cycle got started. More people helping each other and that's how it spread. Number two, um, talk to old people who have experience. Old people are not just people who do not understand Facebook and Twitter and what, the, what is an iPhone. Well, all, all, I, all adults have iPhones over here um, because they have the wisdom. And I'm just going to run over time um, because people have networks. It's all about, even though we're all on computers, and I see some of you guys were on your iPhones, we're still about people. We're about people, meeting more people, and finding connections. There's a thing called six degrees of separations, where you have one person that, if you have six connections, you'll know everybody in the world. And um, how this has worked for us, just talk to people, talk to random people on the street, was um, I was sitting in a coffee shop a month ago, and I've been trying to get in touch with a very famous British chef for um, many months now, and no answer, no answer, no answer. And I was sitting in a coffee shop with a friend of mine, no relation to food cycle, just drinking coffee. He cycles, and I was cycling as well. And um, we were talking, and then his friend Fiona shows up. He's like, oh, hey, Stuart, Fiona, blah, 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 and they talk, 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 and I could have just stayed quiet. I could have just stayed quiet. It's like, I'll be polite. They have a little conversation. She'll be on our merry way, and then we'll continue on our conversation. But I just got right in there. I'm like, Fiona, what do you do? It's like, oh, I bake cupcakes. I bake cupcakes for you know very famous people, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's interesting. Well, this is what I do. I do food cycle. And of course, she looked at it. I gave her um, a pitch, and she, he said, and she said, it's like, oh, why don't you co contact um, Jamie Oliver? I'm like, oh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, you know, I've been doing this for two years. You don't think I have tried to contact Jamie Oliver? How do you expect me to do that? I said it more politely. And she's like, oh, very easy. Give me some stuff. My daughter sits beside her daughter in school. Just give me some stuff. <laughs> okay. And it's as simple as that, guys. It's as simple as that. And the last thing, because I'm way over time, and maybe there's a couple questions you guys want to ask. Um, the most important thing that's kept me going with Food Cycle, because there have been hard times, there have been long days, there have been days I've been missing sleep and had to give up other things. But it's, it's back to what Eden said, is enjoy what you're doing. Love what you're doing. Fall in love. Not fall in love with a boyfriend or girlfriend. Of course you should do that, get married and all that beautiful stuff like that. But actually fall in love with what you do. When you really think about it, excluding sleeping, we're at work for eight, 10 hours a day. That's like more than half of your life. Can you actually take that risk and say, right now, when you're young, that actually, if I don't enjoy my job, half of my life is going to be bad? Just think about it. And there's a big saying that um, I had a British MP tell, and she says, you know, at the end of your life, when you're on your deathbed, 
so, um, the saying goes, it's like, nobody wished they were in the office more. Nobody wished they were working more. And I kind of disagreed with her because I said, actually, if you actually love what you're doing, you're not really working. You're actually just playing. And that's what I'm doing every day, and I, I hope I will continue to play for years and years and years. And I will have time for questions now. I'll leave it at that. Maybe. Uh, maybe just a couple questions for Calvin. One or two. And in his defense, he is a very good cook. Hi, this is Yvonne. Hi. So, uh, are you actually running your business? So, how are you going to earn money? Mm, very interesting question. You haven't question. mentioned that. And then the second question is, um, you are actually um, seeking advice over around the world, besides UK, right? Mm -hmm. It seems that. And why don't you just ask someone in UK, or is that because um, no one in UK start this kind of stuff? or so you can't be seeking advice from them, or just because you think uh, maybe those who start this thing in UK is something like competitor with you, so you don't ask them for no. anything. Um, okay, so the first question is that we, our estimate is that each of our projects in one city will cook about 3,000 meals a year, one day a week. If they do one day a week, they'll cook 3,000 meals. At the same time, we ask each of our projects to raise 5,000 pounds. They have to not only cook the food, which is fun, they also have to take care of this like a company. They have to raise this money, and what we challenge them is to say, if you were to say so social enterprise is the middle, business is on one side, and then charity on the other side, I says you can use that whole spectrum. You can actually charge people for the meals, or you can give them away for free, but you have to decide at the end of the day, you still need that 5,000 pounds, because although we get a lot of things for free, you have to pay for marketing, you have to pay for transportation, you have to pay for cook extra ingredients, and also a portion of that comes back to the central organization to pay for staff costs as well. And on the other question on why I seek international advice, because we're in the international world, there's so much good things going on in Hong Kong right now that I can learn from, from Canada, from the United States, from the UK. So I don't only go overseas, but I just look at everything. I guess one more question? Or no? Do you want me off? Hi, I'm June. So you, you're talking, uh, you once mentioned that uh, you're angry at the youngster. They are not uh, really willing to do something. They are not equipped with skills. So your company run by volunteers, right? Mm -hmm. So how can you push with them or you know, you motivate them to keep doing their job and keep, you know, being passionate about what they are doing. Okay. Um, just to give it, I don't, I don't hate young people. That was a joke. <laughs> Some people don't get my sarcasm. I love young people, and that's why I'm doing this. Um, I always wanted to become a teacher, a history teacher, actually. And um, I'm still happy now because I'm actually teaching in a different way, which is teaching life skills. And on motivation, on volunteers, that's a very, very interesting question. It's actually very hard. Um, because they're not getting paid, they have all the other things to do, and how we've done that is actually just say, we're gonna make this not into a project, this is actually a youth movement. That's why we have t-shirts and water bottles and like a nice website. It's actually about joining a community. So through the motivation is that you're actually part, when you join Food Cycle, you're bigger than something, bigger than yourselves. You're actually part of, it's kind of like the scouts, but only to do with food. And you come because you want to have fun, so we have other, besides just cooking, you also have movie nights, disco nights, bowling nights, and they come together as a community. Um, but they all have one thing in common, which is they volunteer for Food Cycle. And through that community, it makes it stronger. Instead of just one single volunteer, you know, you help an elderly person, or you do this, you also know, get to know friends, and you um, have fun together as well. Thanks. Uh, one quick question. I'm Connie, and I want to know how much time do you spend on training the volunteer teachers? Or do you have any program before you just give them the t-shirt and then give them two and then you cook by yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go. Here's a knife, here's a cutting board, here's a t-shirt, go. Um, no, we have, um, we have a pretty comprehensive training because it's undoubtedly that we young people have the passion, we have the heart 
but what we usually lack are the skills. So we have, um, if you come in at the right time, we give you a three-day training um, at the conference that just ended at the end of October. So everybody comes into London, gets trained up, and then goes back into their own individual communities. The cooking is very easy, but managing the project is actually very hard. So we give them that training, and if they miss the training deadline for the conference, we actually go up to their city and give them that training. And we do on-the-job on training as well. We have manuals. We basically also have um, constant communication over emails or the telephone. So it's, um, it's not like we're their parent, but we're just kind of leading them through any uh, issues that they have. Thanks a lot, Calvin. Thank you.